GB Nine Ball Tour from Croydon. We're at the Southern Masters, and we've got a great match here between Tony Drago of Malta and Lee Rigby, who's actually the GB Nine Ball Tour chairperson. This is Tony Drago's first event on the GB Nine Ball Tour, and he's only got his space through uh, one of the other players in the Pro Division actually pulling out for this particular event. So it means Tony is the only player uh, on the reserve list who fits into the pro division gets this spot and Lee Rigby won the lag and as you can see has just had the first break of this match first time we've seen Lee Rigby uh, in a playing form obviously in Solihull we, we had an interview with Lee regarding the, the new tour and his thoughts about how the GB9 ball tour will develop and now we get to have a look at a bit of his game the break looks quite sweet, so he's made a couple of balls. Just trying to map out the finish of this rack now. The one ball will go into the centre. Lee comes from uh, an English pool background. I mean, my belief is that he's only been playing the American disciplines for a couple of years now. And in that time he's come on leaps and bounds. Although he's risen through the rankings and he's actually got himself a spot on the, the pro division of this tour. And he's also played a couple of Euro tours after the last year as well. And everybody's fully aware of the damage that Tony Drago can do. Part of, oh, Lee's just missed that five ball into the corner. Yeah, he's not going to be very happy with the start he's made there in that rack because that looked like a decent run out available to him there. So they've given Tony this early opportunity. But, uh, Tony's obviously queuing cold as well because he's missed the five into the opposite corner pocket. As I was saying, Tony Drago. A Moscone Cup winning team member for Europe last December against the USA. And an absolutely solid player in that tournament. So just this nine ball to give Lee a one rack to nil lead. She plays nicely into the corner pocket. Having a first view of Tony coming to the table in this second rack. And once again, he's made a couple of balls. It's a bit tight, but the uh, one ball does look as if it passes into this right hand corner pocket down our end. And Tony just having a quick look to check there. And it was a thin cut and he's made it. So that's a good start. Just needs that cue ball to bounce off the cushion a bit, which it does. This is our first opportunity to actually see the speed of Tony Drago. He's uh, not called the Tornado for nothing. As he flies around the table. So just this nine in just over 60 seconds. Pulls the score level to one apiece. I think it's important for Lee, if he's going to stay in touch with Tony in this match, he's going to have to play his own game and not get dragged into the speed at which Tony plays. dry break so he's not going to be particularly happy with that one Tony elects to play safe obviously didn't fancy the thin cut down into the bottom left hand corner so he's left Lee with a, a safety to get out of and we are at Croydon 
in uh, London for the Southern Masters, which is the second event of the GB Nine Ball Tour. As we saw last time in Ram Majid, doubled up and won both the Pro Division and the Main Event Final. And just to fill you in with a bit of news, in this particular event in the last 32 stage, which is what we're watching now, Imran drew Adam Clark. Uh, but unfortunately, due to car troubles, he arrived late and was on the clock from tournament director Shi Liang. And when he finally arrived, there was literally 30 seconds on that clock, so it meant that he had to start three racks to nil down. And it was very, very difficult, uh, even for someone of Imran's calibre, because of the players on this pro division, who are all top-class players and all have the ability to actually cause a lot of damage in the tournament. And Adam actually won that match 9-6, so it meant Imran eliminated very early in the pro division. So it opens the door for somebody else. And now we watch Lee just negotiating this rack. Oh, he's missed another one into that corner. That's two balls. That's a four and a five now. He's missed into that uh, bottom left-hand corner. I think he'll get very, very frustrated with himself because he'll know that if he's going to stay in touch with Tony, he's got to take the opportunities on the table when they're presented to him. And those two missed balls, which in all fairness should have been put away, uh, could have cost him quite dearly. Fantastic position shot from Tony, sending the cue ball the full length of the table to get back onto the eight. So just this nine ball now into the centre pocket to give Tony a 2-1 lead. Another solid break again from Tony. He's lost the cue ball a bit. The cue ball's come down towards the head string. But the uh, potting ability is absolutely phenomenal, so he just drops that two ball into the pocket as if it's a, a huge bucket. Makes the game look very, very easy. And this rack looks to be demolished in quick, fast time, just the eight and nine to go. Just screw back just off the cushion of touch here. Probably wanted to be away from the cushion, but he'll settle for it anyway. And that's a 3-1 lead. And that rack, from break to finish, took 57 seconds. So once again, we see the speed of Tony. And Lee now needs to get himself back onto the scoreboard. If he's got any chance of doing some damage. difficult. Not sure whether Tony's got the angle to get to pop the five into the corner here. Taking a little bit of time to have a look. And it does drop. He's got a little bit close to that six but it should go into the bottom uh, the top right hand corner. Just using the uh, spin on that cue ball very nicely to swing it back round for the seven. It's just absolutely brilliant judgment of pace and, and spin that Tony uses on the cue ball. And oh, oh, that's yes, he has missed it. That eight ball has stayed in the jaws of the pocket, so he'll be disappointed with that, Tony Drago. But it does give Lee this opportunity to come back to the table the eight away and he's just a bit concerned about where that cue ball is going to roll but it's okay. It's 
so that nine ball puts the score back to three racks to two with Tony to break once again just let you know what's coming up on QSport TV from the Southern Masters this is actually our first featured match from the tournament and once again Tony misses a ball in the corner so that's two each from open play so far in the mistakes department just going back to what I was just saying the Southern Masters we uh, actually recorded 11 feature matches from this tournament across the weekend starting with this match between Lee Rigby and Tony Drago so there's plenty of pool to look forward to as we just watch Lee try and control that cue ball safe here not to nope the uh, four ball did go into the corner that was the problem the problem was the speed that the cue ball would come off that cushion and playing it at that speed or even pocket speed the uh, cue ball has come back too far and has made contact with the nine see Lee's a little bit frustrated with himself there a wry smile knowing full well that he should have had a, a clean shot at this five ball he's now got to try and create some kind of escape it looks like he's going for a one rail option and he's missed it so he's given Tony ball in hand there Tony makes it no hesitation whatsoever in coming to the table Oh, another one gone in that corner. I don't know if there's something wrong with this particular table in that corner pocket, but uh, that's now four balls which have been missed in there. I think Lee wanted to be a bit further out on there. He didn't get enough screw on the ball, or as much screw on the ball that he would have wanted. So I think the seven, if it had screwed out another couple of feet, the seven would have dropped into the centre. He may well have to play this down to the top corner now which he does, puts it away nicely so no problem with his cue action another fantastic positional shot from Mr Rigby to drop in on this 9 and this 9 ball will make it 3 apiece three racks apiece from 3-1 down and Lee now has the break again he's made a wing ball but unfo unfortunately the seven ball has caused him a problem in that the uh, cue ball now won't pass it to get to the one ball which has actually dropped over a pocket so he's either going to have to play a push out here or perhaps he may attempt to play the kick you see the problem that Lee's got after that break elected to push out there just turning to Tony and calling the push out so he's now just got to come up with some kind of shot which he'd be happy playing if uh, Tony did put him back in and also something which 
Tony perhaps doesn't want to play. And Tony has put him back in, so I don't think he's rolled far enough there. Either that or it was Lee's plan. You have to play this with a touch of swerve. I think he's over swerved it there. He's uh, made the contact with a one, but uh, he didn't drop into the corner pocket. Tony plays a lovely shot down the rail. Just put that one ball away. And cuts the two into the opposite corner pocket to maintain position on the four. Plays very, very nonchalantly, Tony. Just uh, saunters around the table. A series of... Uh, Stuns and little screw shots. Obviously it was Snooker that made him famous. But he's uh, turned to the pool game and has become very, very proficient at it indeed. Recently won the Paris Euro Tour. And that's another rack to his name, so he takes the lead once again at 4-3. Yeah, that should be Tony's break now in the 8th rack. So a good tight rack, the 9 ball stayed on the spot. He's uh, probably a little bit lucky with the way the cue ball and the 1 ball have run. He's got to play the, the 1 into this uh, corner pocket. Just having to stretch a little bit there, but nothing too difficult. Screws off the cushion to give himself position on the two plays a nice follow shot with the cue ball there to main con maintain control of this rack Featured in all the televised tournaments, Tony now. The Whirlpool Masters, the World Championships. And that nine ball extends his lead to five racks to three. Leo want to make this particular rack count. See if he can pull one back on the board. has made a ball and the balls have actually split quite nicely and the cue ball stayed pretty much in the center of the table so Lee will be happy with the the way that break has gone for him nice screw shot Probably would want to be a touch straighter on this two ball into the corner. Looking at the position of the two balls, the seven and the nine down there, it's a bit of an obstacle to get the cue ball back out off two rails. I think there may be a bit of collision with the seven. So we'll just have a look to see how, how he cues this one. Yeah, he played it very nicely. He did play it with top and it did go behind the seven, which is what I was unsure of. I think he's a little bit disappointed with where the cue balls come because it's ended up in no man's land. I think the uh, the way Lee was playing it, he wanted to play the three into the centre pocket. He's now got a much thinner cut. And we'll have to try and play this three into the corner pocket. Or try and hide the cue ball. Attempted it in the corner, and on this occasion he's not made it. So once again, Tony 
comes to the table with only six balls remaining. The three looks uh, like a dead cert, it's just getting position on that four ball. Which it doesn't look as if he has got, unless Tony can play the bank here. No, nope, he elects to play safety. And very, very good knowledge. Puts Lee in a snooker. Showing his uh, snooker background there, Tony, with that safety shot. Nine ball is such an attacking game, people often forget that there are tactical and, and, and safety elements of the game as well, which you have to be proficient in if you're going to succeed at the highest level. Lee's attempted to play that off two rounds, which was the right shot, but uh, unfortunately he's come between the four and the five. So he's once again had to give up ball in hand. Tony just stuns the cue ball across. Just missing the centre of the pocket, centre of the table there, the centre pocket. He's come a little bit low on the seven, but shouldn't be too much of a problem because the eight is further up the table anyway. And when you've got control of the cue ball like that, then there's no need to worry. Tony will just roll this through now. Once again extends his lead to 6-3. And he's breaking again. And what's the 9? The 9 has dropped. We'll have a look at that one again. That's actually the first golden break we've seen in all the coverage we've had on QSport TV so far. If you watch the 9 in the top left hand corner, just dropping down there. So that gives Tony a 7-3 lead. Bit of a freak, so Lee can't get too downhearted about that. Those can happen to anyone, but that's another problem. This time Lee has scratched the cue ball. I think Lee's going to be a bit frustrated, a little bit disappointed with the amount of mistakes that he's made because it's simply let Tony in on far too many occasions. Oh, well they're saying that, Tony's missed another one as well. I was just about to say, Tony has missed a fair number of balls as well, but when, when Lee has come to the table, he's just failed to capitalise, which is unfortunate. I believe it's the first meeting that these two players have had. And... Um, Lee would have wanted to make every effort to make a game of it. He's played a great safety shot there, but Tony's hit it off one rail. Oh, and he's lost the cue ball, so Lee does have a chance now, with ball in hand. to the top left hand corner, just screws back just a touch, makes a little nudge on the seven ball there, leaves himself a longer six ball than probably he would have wanted, shouldn't cause him too many problems, and he's had another nudge on the eight ball, just shows you when it's not going 100% your way that these little nudges and little kicks can often cause you a bit of a trouble, but, oh that one wiped his feet. On this occasion, it hasn't really caused him that much of a problem. Moved the eight over to the pocket, uh, to the side rail. Sorry, but Lee's played that very well. So he does pull one back to seven four. With Tony Drago to break. It is, as you can see from our screen, a race to nine. And alternate breaks, and that's the same for all of the GB9 ball tour events this season. As Tony gets down to work once again. He 
possibly just waiting for somebody on the next table there, which is why I haven't got down so quick. So it takes somebody on the next door table to actually slow Tony Drago down. Just these two remaining balls. And that nine ball puts him on the hill at eight racks to four. Once again, Lee has lost that cue ball. It's the second scratch he's had of this match. And looking at the lie of the balls, this could be it for Lee Rigby. Nice use of the uh, left hand side there to spin that cue ball back out towards the five which he hits the heart of the pocket with just a little stop shot stun across for the seven that one almost didn't drop but uh, on this occasion it did so it's this nine ball then to put Tony Drago into the second round of the Pro Division at the Southern Masters and commiserations to Lee Rigby, who on this occasion has fallen at the first hurdle. We'll see you again soon. Attempts it in the corner, and on this occasion he's not made it. So once again, Tony comes to the table with only six balls remaining. The three looks uh, like a dead cert. It's just getting position on that four ball. Which it doesn't look as if he has got, unless Tony can play the bank here. No, he elects to play safety. And very, very good knowledge. Puts Lee in a snooker. Showing his uh, snooker background there, Tony, with that safety shot. Nine ball is such an attacking game, people often forget that there are tactical and, and, and safety elements of the game as well, which you have to be proficient in if you're going to succeed at the highest level. Lee's attempted to play that off two rails, which was the right shot, but uh, unfortunately he's come between the four and the five, so he's once again had to give up ball in hand. Tony just stuns the cue ball across, just missing the centre of the pocket, centre of the table there, the centre pocket. He's come a little bit low on the seven, but shouldn't be too much of a problem because the eight is further up the table anyway. And when you've got control of the cue ball like that, then there's no need to worry. Tony will just roll this through now. And once again extends his lead. It's a 6-3. And he's breaking again. Now watch the 9. The 9 has dropped. We'll have a look at that one again. That's actually the first golden break we've seen in all the coverage we've had on QSport TV so far. If you watch the nine in the top left-hand corner, just dropping down there. So that gives Tony a 7-3 lead. Bit of a freak, so Lee can't get too downhearted about that. Those can happen to anyone, but that's another problem. This time Lee has scratched the cue ball. I think Lee's going to be a bit frustrated, a little bit disappointed with the amount of mistakes that he's made because it's simply let Tony in on far too many occasions. 
Oh, well, they're saying that. Tony's missed another one as well. I was just about to say, Tony has missed a fair number of balls as well, but when, when Lee has come to the table, he's just failed to capitalise, which is unfortunate. I believe it's the first meeting that these two players have had. And um, Lee would have wanted to make every effort to make a game of it. He's played a great safety shot there, but Tony's hit it off one rail. Oh, and he's lost the cue ball, so Lee does have a chance now with ball in hand. Play the five into the top left hand corner. Just screws back just a touch. Makes a little nudge on the seven ball there. Leaves himself a longer six ball than probably he would have wanted. Shouldn't cause him too many problems. And he's had another nudge on the eight ball. Just shows you when it's not going 100% your way that these little nudges and little kicks can often cause you a bit of a trouble. But, oh, that one wiped his feet. On this occasion, it hasn't really caused him that much of a problem. Move the eight over to the pocket, uh, to the side rail, sorry, but. Lee's played that very well. So he does pull one back to 7-4. With Tony Drago to break. It is, as you can see from our screen, a race to nine. And alternate breaks. And that's the same for all of the GB9 Ball Tour events this season. Tony gets down to work once again. Possibly just waiting for somebody on the next table there, which is why I haven't got down so quick. So it takes somebody on the next door table to actually slow Tony Drago down. Just these two remaining balls. And that nine ball puts him on the hill at eight racks to four. And once again, Lee has lost that cue ball. It's the second scratch he's had of this match. And looking at the lie of the balls, this could be it for Lee Rigby. use of the uh, left hand side there to spin that cue ball back out towards the five which he hits the heart of the pocket with just a little stop shot stun across for the seven that one almost didn't drop but uh, on this occasion it did so it's this nine ball then to put Tony Drago into the second round of the Pro Division at the Southern Masters. And commiserations to Lee Rigby, who on this occasion has fallen at the first hurdle. We'll see you again soon.